Hey, Facebook family, good evening. Um, it was like a little late, but it's got a word of my spirit, man. I just want to go ahead and share real quick before I just go to bed. I'm tired, if, if you can't tell. Uh, worked out, <clears throat> trying to get back in my uh, workout routine. Uh, you know, lifting and just trying to get, get in better shape. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. So not, I'm paying for the toll <laughs> physically. You see what I'm saying? But in a day, man, you know, it is what it is. So I don't, don't want to bore you guys. But hey, Glenn, what's up, man? Hey, Anthony, what's up, bro? Uh, see, I got a few people on. Um, just trying to wait to at least get about five. But I mean, three is good. I know everybody's in different time zones and all of that stuff. So yeah, man. Just, you know, it's reflecting on my anniversary today with my wife. You know what I'm saying? We've been married six years. Uh, very, very blessed and highly favored by God. Okay, I got my five people. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, I'm doing a lot of reflection. Uh, so, um, I'll probably go back and title the stream properly, but I just want to speak while the revelation is fresh in my head, fresh in my spirit. So, here's some self reflection, right? Um, tonight, I just, you know, praying to God, just reading my word, studying, and just talking to my wife. We had a, a profound, dope conversation earlier. And I was reading my devotional, and Moses was highlighted to me in my spirit, right? Moses. And so let me just go ahead and get to the cut to the chase, all right? And here's what uh, I realized about Moses. Then I'll, I'll then I'll break it down to where you can make it fit how you how you are and, and uh, how you feel. If that makes sense. Or basically, in short terms, um, you can relate it to you. Hey Sam, thank you. So. <clears throat> Here it is, right? So Moses, the people of Israel were in Egyptian tyranny or they were in slavery in Egypt. And it, and they were crying out to the Lord. They're asking God, thank you, Ms. Sharon, uh, for a deliverer. And boom, what happens? God speaks to Moses. God deals with Moses. He's in the, in the wilderness for 40 years, preparing, getting right with God, getting right for his task at hand. So, excuse me. So then... As I read my devotional, it went from, you know, the people complaining like, OK, so who sent you, you know, and it took from them saying that to Moses getting upon scene and for the 10 plagues that shook the earth, that shook the 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 Egyptians, where it, it validated God's power, it validated that God is sovereign and can't nobody stop God but himself whenever he decides to. And it showed that the Spirit of God was really with Moses, you know, a leader who felt like he was not equipped. He didn't speak the best. He didn't have the, he didn't have a lot. You know what I'm saying? He had a lot of things in a, in a palace they grew up in, which made him uh, a benefit to, you know, for the Egyptians, but because he knew the Egyptian culture. And granted, he's a Hebrew, but he knew he grew up in the, in the culture. So he knew a culture that he's familiar with. Even though he was of Jewish, Jew, Jewish, excuse me, descent. So, anyways, moving along, <clears throat> he basically, um, you know, was chosen by God to deliver people. And here's something that the Holy Spirit began to highlight to me: as, um, oh, well, then that's confirmation, brother. And praise God. So here, 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 and here's what the revelation is: um, no matter what happened, no matter what occurred. Moses cannot satisfy the people. Hear me, hear me, okay? If you guys are getting nothing else from the stream, listen to what I'm saying now. Moses could not satisfy the people. Even with all the miracles he did, even with splitting the Red Sea, even with delivering them out of the wilderness, or excuse me, out of the 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 Egypt, getting them out of Egypt, walking across dry land in the midst of the water. All these profound miracles that say who God is that say that that just validated all these things people were still unsatisfied even where they got to the wilderness and they were complaining about you know being thirsty people complaining to him about well there's not enough food and God gave them manna from heaven the angelic food from heaven manna there was just enough for them to eat for that day and of course, they try to get more. God caused that manna to dry up and get stale and taste bad. But 
God blessed them so, so much through the hands of Moses. And it was just not good enough for the people. And so they went from, okay, who sent this guy? Wow, this guy has saved us. And then, because of their own disobedience, keep game. And, and here's the funny thing about people is that no matter what you do for them, all the good things you can do for them, which probably outweighs, hey, my, how you doing? So I need to, um, which outweighs all the, the pros that you do for people's lives can always outmatch the cons. So, Chris, um, that they do, period. Your good deeds towards them, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but in this case, we're, we're talking about Moses, and you know, you can assess yourself later. But you, <clears throat> if you know that you're leading people with a good heart, you're doing things out of a good intent, and you just have people who just are selfish and can't see their own errors, you will always be the, the bad guy, so to speak. And so, for uh, a, a case in point here, was Moses was the bad guy. To the Israelites, when in actuality he wasn't, he was just their leader that God appointed. God was with them. This is why the Bible says that God was was friends with Moses, and that he was one of the only prophets that God literally spoke to face to face. As you know, I'm talking to you guys now, even though you guys are not directly in front of me physically, but you guys are. You know, if you're here in front of me, of course we'd be talking face to face. See what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, so. At the end of the day, you can do your best for people and it still won't be good enough. That's another point I was trying to make. And it got to where they were stuck in the wilderness for 40, 40 years. You know what I'm saying? It's a long time when it when in actuality it was only a two days trip. A day or a um, a trip that was no longer than two days. Two days. But because of their own disobedience, they made it longer. They had a, a longer period of time in the wilderness because of what they did. Now, what Moses did, Moses listened to God. He prayed and whatever. Now, of course, he didn't see the promised land due to his own frustration dealing with the people. But I get it. Like, God, I'm sick and tired of these people. I'm going to just, you know, hit the rock. And, you know, when in that case, because there's two incidents that took, that took place in the Old Testament. And I believe the book of Exodus where... Um, Moses, at one point, Moses told, or God told Moses, excuse me, to speak, uh, to hit the rock, and then the sweet water is going to come out, and then they'll be able to drink it. Then another occasion where God told Moses, okay, this time I want you to speak to the rock, then this water is going to come forth, and then we're going to be fine. But because of the frustrating, because of his frustrations with the people, and people constantly talking bad about him, talking Oh man, we need to do this to him, and even even his own brother and sister got cursed because of uh, Miriam. Uh, she she became leprous because God told Moses that hey, basically long story short, for time's sake, your sister's talking bad about you. I'm like you know, but because she's talking bad about somebody that I appointed, I'm gonna hear a body with leprosy, and you know of course Aaron, who's a, the priest. Had to do the Levitical thing that they did back then when people had leprosy. They would sit outside the camp for seven days until the skin cleared up, basically. You know, it's kind of like how we doing this coronavirus thing now. You know, social distancing. So <laughs> I won't try to be funny, but that's what happened back then. You feel me? So <clears throat> anyway, I'm just trying to like give you all these wickets so that I can make my my, my points well, as a, as a, um, I teach you guys. Uh, so yeah, they complained about him, God heard it, and then boom, did it again. So the last thing I want to say is this, man, to encourage somebody, you know, who's watching, is that understand that you're never going to be good enough for some people. And normally, when you think about that, those people are people who are, I hate to say it like this, guys, but, um, because I don't want to say that they're bad people. But what I would say is that people who don't know how to appreciate the good things that come towards their way, you know what I'm saying? Those are the people that always see glass, a glass of water half full, or excuse me, half empty instead of half full. You know what I'm saying? And so, in a day, Moses didn't do these people no wrong. He led them to the, to the best of his ability. He went to God every day for prayer, you know, and how, how do we know? Because the Bible said so. He was literally in a tent. And the glory of God overshadowed that area. And basically, 
the, the, the fear of the Lord hit the people. People say when God spoke, it sounded like many, 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 many waters. And the only person that wasn't scared was Joshua, who was the, Moses' predecessor to lead the people into the promised land. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so in the end of the day, what I'm getting at, and this is the point for you, if you don't get nothing else from this video, is that understand that it is, it is for one, it's okay to not be accepted by everybody. That's one. Two, check your fruit. Check yourself. If you have a friendship that is not properly being reciprocal in the sense of, okay, I, I'm, if I'm putting this effort, I'm if I'm putting this amount of effort out to you, I expect that in return. You see what I'm saying? But if you're putting out this effort to these people or to these individuals, and it's not being duplicated back to you, then who's really benefiting? They are. You're not because you're tired and when you're in need, people aren't there. So then who's the bad guy? Not you. It's those people that are basically taking advantage of you. Let's put it like that. Um... So yeah, I just, I just, I just, you know, I just really want to share that with somebody, man. I, I feel like quite some people needed that, you know. And so for me personally speaking, then I wrap up this video. Um, so for me personally speaking, I don't, I don't, I try not to let the, the, um, the pins of outsiders affect me as a man. I'm bold. Um, I'm very, very honest. I try to be as tactful as I can when I speak to people. I really do, but if if people were to, to make fun of me, how, how I look, or how I talk, how I am, when I say I don't care, trust and believe, man, I do not care. I'm not going to lose sleep because you don't like me. I'm not going to like be a, a, a offended by what you say about how I talk or how I dress. I do not care because in my heart, in my spirit, in my mind, I realize that, you know what, if it's not coming from God... If it's not coming from my wife, if it's not coming from my kids or my family members that have been around me long enough to know me, then their opinion, it is what it is. It is their opinion. It's just their entitled opinion. It is just them. Point blank, period. I don't care. I'm going to keep saying that till it registers to somebody. I do not care. If it's not my God, my wife, or my kids, or my family speaking to my heart, it is not going to affect me. You know, you see what I'm saying? And this is why that, you know, this is why when, when you're in a relationship, you know, your, your husband or your wife has the power to either make you or break you. That's why the Bible says that, um, you know, for husbands to be gentle towards your wives because they're the weaker vessel. And for the wives to, you know... Not only submit to your husband's, you know, which means that, you know, you honor his leadership, you honor him. Basically, it's reciprocated. When you honor each other, you have a happy home. It's just not about, and I don't even know I'm going here, but I'm going to keep speaking. Um, it's not about just being a happy wife, happy life, or a happy spouse, happy house. It's a, it's a team effort. It's about your husband being just as happy as you are, you know, because it's, it's jaded or one-sided when you say, Oh, happy wife, happy life, and the husband's needs are not being met. Because in the end of the day, it's not about just a wife. It's not about just a husband. It's a team effort. It's one flesh, one spirit, one union, one vow. So it's equally as important for both parties to be happy. Because if I'm not happy, then my wife's not going to be happy. If my wife ain't happy, then I'm not going to be happy. So we both should be happy. Man, I don't know. I don't even know what I came from, but I, I know that that was a word for somebody though. <laughs> um. So yes. Yeah. So anyway, back to what I was saying about Moses and, uh, you know, not not um, allowing outside people to influence you. So at the end of the day, this is what I want to say. Then I'm gonna wrap this up. Just understand that as long as God accepts you, as long as your husband or your wife or your wife accepts you, as long as you know um, your family or sometimes family could be the the closest people that can cut you the deepest. I'm just being real. Um, as long as your core group accept you, then that's all that matters in life. You don't need a whole lot of friends. You really don't. You don't even need a whole lot of associates. I have more associates than I do. Ha I have more associates than I have friends. 
and I have more family than I have friends, if that makes sense. So I'm saying it one more time. I have more associates than I have friends, and I have more uh, friends than I do have a family. If I call you family, that means that you're well loved by me, you're accepted by me, and that, yeah, that's that, you know? But if you're a friend, there's literally levels to this type stuff. You see what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, if you're considered my family, then I'm going to allow certain parts of my life to be visible to you, to be shown to you because I trust you. You've earned my trust. I'm not going to show certain areas. I'm not going to have every, I'm not going to have intimate conversations with somebody that I would consider an associate. Why? Because they haven't earned that trust in that region yet of my heart or my feelings. You see what I'm saying? So, in a day, man, um, Moses was a man of God, period. He was accepted by God because God sent him. And he didn't need a whole lot of validation from people. If anything, if you read the story of Moses, read all that he did and all that he went through, it all goes down to him just trying to do the right thing for God's people, you know, and people just being people, being a, a, a regular society, because we're no different from them. We do the same thing that do they, that they did. The only difference is just a time time frame, you know what I'm saying? So that's really that's really about it for the video, guys. So again, just understand that you don't need everybody's acceptance. You don't need to be validated by nobody. As long as God validates you, God accepts you, your husband or your wife accepts you, your kids, your children accept you, and your family accepts you, you know? Um, and and a last, <laughs> I keep at, coming up with all these last points. Another thing is that when you are truly of God, a whole lot of people aren't going to accept you no way because you're, you're special, you're different, you're you're rare, you see what I'm saying, and and I, I don't know. I, I guess as I'm getting older, man, these are things that I'm learning to realize about myself that when you when you're rare, you're not gonna be accepted by everybody. You're not gonna be accepted by everything, you know. And that's okay. It is totally okay. It's normal. It's normal. You know what I mean? That's why you know if you look back in your in your life and you think about people that you went to school with. Oh, that person was a misfit. But then when you actually took time to talk to the misfits, per se, they were the coolest, most loving people that you ever came across. Why? Because they were different. They were not like, they wasn't like anybody else. And so when you look at the Bible, the Bible is full of misfits, man. Full of misfits. Like Gideon, who had self-esteem issues. Like David, who had rejection issues because he wasn't accepted by his father his dad and that's a whole different story i can preach a whole sermon on that myself uh joshua you know um so many people saw paul you know peter was a misfit but they're all loved and anointed by god you know what i'm saying so again when you're anointed by god thank you glenn yeah and, and that's why i wanted to say misfits when, you, when you're anointed thank you brother when you're anointed by God, you're going to be a misfit, period. People are not going to understand you. You know, you're going to be weird. But then the Bible says that we are already a peculiar people as is. So that's that, man. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, sorry if I was kind of ranting and kind of all over the place, but it, just, it is what it is. So God bless you guys, man. Thank you for all the uh, anniversary wishes today. I had a great time, you know, with my wife and stuff like that. Um, again, if you need anything to, to, you know, any prayer, any, uh, specific needs, please. My inbox is always open. I'm always, um, you know, I'm, I'm always praying, man. I'm always, you know, I'm trying to, trying to seek the face of God. So keep, keep us in prayer, please. All right. Enemy always tries to hit us hard. Uh, enemy always tries to hit my wife hard, hit me hard, my kids hard, whatever. But that's good, though, because it means that we're actually being effective and that we're actually doing something for the kingdom of God. So, uh, all right. I love you guys, man. Good night. Peace and God bless.